But what are some of the tips that you like to make sure that you use? And I know this is a broad question because every claim is different, but what are some of the things that come to mind that you think are very, very important to make sure that upon filing that claim and upon working that claim that the insured does indeed get indemnified? Well, I could cover documentation, but you do such an excellent job of that that there's no need for me to uh, belabor that point. Um, <clears throat> document the fire out of everything. I mean, just documentation is king. And um, so aside from that, the art of persuasion, the problem with most people when they're talking with adjusters is they're making a lot of statements versus asking questions. Questions are the second most powerful form of persuasion that exists. It's the art of persuasion. It's not putting on your boxing gloves and going a round or two with the adjuster. Um, it doesn't work. I mean, think about it. If you're being argumentative with the adjuster, if they're being argumentative to you, what are the chances they're going to persuade you if they're being argumentative? No, you're going to get defensive. Slim to none. So what makes us think that us being argumentative to them is going to persuade them. It's illogical. It, it doesn't happen. So that's the reason why we use the art of persuasion. So I started studying sales, and that's all sales is, is the art of persuasion and uh, negotiation techniques 35 years ago. And I've been studying it ever since. And, um, you know, I boil it down to, a, you know, a number of different principles that I teach. And so when dealing with a claims adjuster, same thing when you're dealing with a prospective client, you should be asking lots of questions. In fact, it should be about a 90% to 10% ratio, 90% questions, 10% uh, statements, shouldn't it? If you make a statement, it can be refuted. How can, adjuster, how can an adjuster refute a question? So we're hardwired when someone asks a question that we do what? Answer it. That we answer it. So we ask questions. And if you question skillfully and listen carefully, their answer tells you what your next question should be. And one of the things that very few people are aware of is the person asking the questions is in control of the conversation because they're steering the conversation with their questions. Most people are unaware of that. So becoming very skilled and adept at asking questions allows you to control the conversation with the adjuster with the end in mind that all the damage be accounted for, that a reasonable method of repair is agreed to, an agreed scope, and that the insured be indemnified. And if what happens is, I'll bet you, with most folks out there, it's 1090. They spend 90% of their time making statements and 10% of the time asking questions. And it's not that difficult to turn a statement into a question, is it? I mean, you can do it with just about any statement, can't you? In fact, I'm doing it right now, aren't I? It just takes practice, doesn't it? <laughs> that is awesome. 